Welcome back to Sunday Vibes, one and all football family. Today, I'm joined by Patrick Van Straat and he's back from the wedding. Hope you had a good time up in Scotland, mate. Yeah, it was lovely. I was glad invited. Yeah, very glad. Yeah. And of course, Andrew Henderson, five-time World Freestyle Footballer of the Year. Better than Colin McGregor. Champ, 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 champ. That's what I'm talking about. The man who can do this with a football. That looked pretty intense, Andrew. What about a fireball? I want to know how the hell you pulled it off. Must have burnt yourself numerous times. Yeah, it was pretty difficult. Yeah. Um, I burned through about four pairs of shoes on that shoe. Four shoot, so pairs yeah. of boots? Yeah. We can't even get sent one pair of boots. This man's burning through four for fun. <laughs> I mean, honestly, World Foot Freestyle Football of the Year. Um, how did you get into freestyle? Uh, I started usual. freestyle in 2006, yeah. so yeah, about 11 years ago. Yeah. I saw a video online and I was what pretty video impressed. Was it? it was a video of a guy called Sofian Tuzani from Holland, yeah. and he was basically just doing, well, at the time I thought it was like, I actually thought it was fake, but now really? watching it, it just seems like really simple moves. Have you yeah. met him since? Yeah, we met actually, and uh, I told him the story, and it's funny, now he's like, kind of like a fan of mine. It's like, it's a really, really? weird thing for me, and. Um, yeah, no, I started from watching him. I also saw Brazilian Ronaldo. Yeah. Um, saw yeah. some skills from him and uh, yeah, just started kicking a ball in my garden and it went from there. Started competing and training harder. And yeah. how, how many times a week do you have to train to be like doing all the craziest shit? I'd say around five days a week, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can start off less. You can start off once or twice a week for an hour or yeah. two, but the top guys are training three to five hours a day. Five Three to, to five days. hours a day. Yeah, five to six days a week. So it's full time, it's full on. And that, that is mental. But you do get kind of flown all around the world, don't you, to, to do tricks and flicks and judge competitions. Yeah, Who, who's, who's the best like the best player that you, you've worked with, like freestyle wise? Um, I'd say I'd say it's between the two guys. Yeah. Between Neymar and Cristiano. Yeah. Cristiano as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Cristiano's got good skills actually, like he doesn't show him too much anymore. He's got more of the step overs and stuff, yeah. but yeah, he's got some decent, decent moves. And uh, yeah, I was pretty impressed. I've seen a few of his videos on like Five Mag. You know, he's yeah, just yeah, doing like yeah. keepy yeah, yeah. like Sean Garnier and stuff like that. Yeah, makes yeah. it makes it look really easy. Nah, I know, good. like you're doing a lot of free stuff football. Do you have a normal football team you support? Do you follow a lot of football? You're so busy, aren't you? I always get asked this, and uh, I'm kind of neutral at the moment. I used to be a massive Manchester United fan, like not yeah, really, nice. yeah, but uh, not anymore, I guess. Uh, like, they've changed so much over the previous years and yeah, I think freestyle just made me find a new passion for the skill side of football, so yeah. I'm kind of more just focused on watching like the most skillful players or the best goals and that sort of thing. So I'm kind of, I'm not really a glory sport, but yeah. kind of in, in It's less upsetting that way. Yeah, like, we'll yeah. try being an Arsenal you know fan, I mean? it's fucking horrible. Yeah, we both grew up in the South West. Obviously, Andrew grew up in Cornwall, I grew up in Exeter, and... So there's Man no United, You just support the best teams, don't you? There's no local teams there. Literally, glory hunter I am. Um, the first question oh, right. leads us quite nicely onto Jason Yu. He says, will Manchester United finish in the top four this season? Pato, mm. I'm going to come to you first, big man. What are you saying? Are we getting in there, sneaking in there? I think they're one of the best four teams in the country at the moment, the way they're playing, but... They've got a significant kind of points disadvantage against yeah. some of the teams above them. Uh, I will say no because I've got a bet with Joe that Arsenal will finish above Man United this season, uh, which actually is right on the knife edge. It Very go, close. It could go either way. It might come down to that match at the Emirates. So, uh, I, I'm going to say they'll finish fifth. Finish fifth. I Liverpool think. sixth. I don't know. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I kind of agree with you. I'm horrified to say it. I think United are going to miss out. Really? I think we're going to finish fifth. Yeah. And I think it will come down to the fact we've still got to play you and we've got to play Spurs away from home. And yeah. Those are the games that are going to kill us. So just yeah. don't see it happening. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't see them finishing in the top four. Could be actually an exciting end, end to the season. Well, it's definitely going to be an exciting end to the season. But what do you guys at home think? Will Manchester United finish in the top four? Oh, are they just going to miss out? You vote in the poll above my head. Here, floating. Click it. Next question then comes from Ludwig Sudar. Hedwig from Harry Potter, possibly his cousin. Unconfirmed reports, probably not. Uh, he says, who would win a game between a European eleven and a South American eleven at the moment? Andrew, what do you reckon? 
I'd say uh, European eleven takes that. Yeah. Just? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, although, you know, I love the skills, I love the South yeah. American flavor, the Brazilian style. Uh, I'd say, yeah, the, the European eleven for me, it's, yeah, it's an easy choice actually. Because, really? Yeah, I think in terms of level, like all round, you know, you've got Brazil and then you've got Sanchez. Yeah. And you got Suarez, but really, but not too much more. Yeah. What do you reckon, Pato? I, I kind of agree. I think the European yeah. eleven is a bit more balanced. Yeah. Like you look at the, like the South Americans, they have outside of say like Vidal or like uh, Fernandinho and some de some degree still Mascarano. Like they don't have outstanding kind of central midfielders or defensive midfielders or whatever. True. You look at, whereas if you were to create a European eleven, I think you could have like you know Tony Kroos. You could have like Thiago. Um, you could have Luka Modric in midfield. Yeah. Then you've got, you know, Verratti, Busquets, like all these guys, you've got so many options. Maybe your front three isn't quite as good, but you've still got Lewandowski, Ronaldo, Griezmann, all those Shit, kind of guys. So you've still got the Broyla. skills there as well. Yeah, you've exactly. got Lewandowski's got great skills, you've got Ronaldo, you got... Yeah. yeah. Our next question comes from Alex North. It's a quick one. He says, who's the worst Premier League manager since 2000? Hashtag Sunday vibes. Let's keep this one nice and clean. Who are you saying, Andrew? Uh, I'm gonna go for Ian Dowie. <laughs> Ian Dowie, why? Yeah. Just because. Just because. Yeah. He does look remarkably like sloth from the Goonies, lads. He honestly does. There's the tendency. Go it's the teeth you? going out, it's the forehead. Sloth from the Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> Not a great resemblance. Pato, who are you going for? Uh, Tim Sherwood. Sherwood? I hate him. I hate him so much. I think he's a fucking idiot. What? And, when, and when he was at Spurs, he played like Nasser Chadley as a defensive midfielder. He played Paul uh, Walker at number 10. Clearly just because he was like, he probably looked at his pace on FIFA and thought like, yeah, let's get him in the forward line. He's an absolute tool. Yeah. And then he took Villa down. I hate him. But he did, he did pull off a gilet. Uh, I've got Roberto Martinez, obviously, but I've spoken enough about him on this show. It's like it's a campaign. Fetish. It's like a campaign against Bobby Martinez. So I'm going to say potentially Bob Bradley, Brad Bobley, about 70 days in charge. I think he lost about 80% of his game, uh, lost seven out of the 11 he competed in, I think. Yeah. Uh, utterly pathetic, and then lost the job. So I'm going Bob Bradley, that's it. Wow, twist the knife. One question I'm really interested to ask you, Andrew, is who's the nicest footballer you've ever worked with? Somebody who, who goes above and beyond, maybe? There's lots of nice guys. Yeah. Um, I'd say, this might come as a bit of a surprise, just because what? of sometimes how he's portrayed in the media and stuff like that. But uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, for me, yeah, yeah he's really? like, he's just such a genuine guy, very humble, and uh, I mean, you probably wouldn't think that he's always taking his shirt off and stuff like that. But like, he's <laughs> he is, he's a decent guy. And um, when did you work with him? I worked with him back in October, November time. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what were you doing? We were just shooting a commercial, and I was helping him choreograph his skills and really? uh, yeah, teach him some skills and just sort of yeah, help create the shots and stuff like that. But it was nice, I spoke to him quite a lot, got to know him um, and he was just like, there was one shot where he, he had to like kick the ball and knock drones out of the sky. Oh cool. And uh, there was like a little kind of like river thing in front yeah. of him and the ball sometimes, you know, like when it came back or something would drop into the river. And like there's guys paid to sort of pick it up with nets and stuff like that. And he, he goes and just jumps in and like takes it out. And he's like, you know, he's really up for working. And he's like, you know, I, I like that. He's, he's like really strong minded and just like works hard and he's dedicated and he's like true professional. So for me, yeah, probably the, the that, nicest That guy. comes as a surprise to me, Cristiano Ronaldo I know. being the nicest. I'll be cheeky. Who about, what about the worst? No, oh, here we go. Um, <laughs> do you know what? I'm actually going to answer that. I'm going to give you an answer there. Go on. Um, I'm excited now. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so he's retired now. Um, Edgar Davids. For really? Me. Yeah. Really? I don't know if you guys have had any experience working no, with haven't. him, but um, no. for me, he's the, he's the worst. Why? Why? <laughs> what happened? I don't want to go too into it, but uh, we came very close to, uh, you know, we had a bit of an altercation oh, at one oh, point, shit. and uh, it was, yeah. What were you doing with it? The well, goggles he, came off. The go yeah, they did. Um, yeah. So he was judging a freestyle competition. He, he runs or is uh, part owner yeah. of a brand that was really involved in freestyle, especially yeah. back in the earlier days, 2009, 2010. And I was in my first world championships and I went out to South Africa. I can't believe I'm telling you guys this. <laughs> um, so I went out to South Africa, competing with my first world championships. I was only 18 years old, fresh, hungry and 
wanted to win, you know. I, yeah. I've been training so hard. Go out there, no one knows who I am, like I'm the underdog. I smash everyone in the group, and then it switches the judges for the top 16, the celebrity judges. Oh no. And Edgar's the head judge on the <laughs> panel. And uh, he's got his clothing line that he's wearing the t-shirt oh, yeah, of it. Of the guy yeah. I'm against, he's wearing the t-shirt of it. Oh. Um, both from the same country. And uh, they, it was like, fix. it's a fix, like so badly. <laughs> everyone knows it. There's no, <laughs> oh. no, everyone knows it. It was like, I mean, I'm, I'm not, if I, if I lose, I lose, you know? Yeah, like, sure. it's just how it is. But this one was like, I did everything right. Even to this day, everyone remembers it in the freestyle community is like the worst decision oh. ever. And uh, so we go backstage after the competition. Of course, I'm devastated. Yeah. Uh, my dreams were smashed. But uh, went to the after party, you know. Oh. And I was celebrating with the winner. And, you know, the community is so nice in freestyle. So we all support each other. Um, of course, I was still very upset. Fuming. But then people were going up to Edgar in the after party. And uh, sorry if I'm going on a bit here, guys. No, but yeah, yeah, this is amazing. Is so, so people were going up to like, other judges from the group stages yeah. and other freestylers were going up to uh, David's in the after party and they were saying, you know, I just want to know from a judge's point of view or from a freestyler's point of view or from a spectator's point of view, why, like, what were the reasons for yeah. that decision, you know, trying to be nice. And I could kind of hear it in the background and we, we weren't speaking to each other. I was just trying to avoid him, you know. Yeah. I, he was the last person I wanted to speak to after that. And, uh, you know, I think it was kind of building up in his, his mind, you know, like he knew, he knew he made the bad decision and stuff. So he came up to me, tapped me on the shoulder and he was like, was it fair? That's the first thing he said, he goes, was it fair? And I was like, what was, was what fair? You know, I just didn't want to talk to him. And he's like, was the decision me voting against uh, this, yeah. this guy fair? And I was like, if you want my honest opinion, as soon as you asked, I, no, it wasn't, it wasn't fair. You know, I, I, I felt that I clearly won. Yeah. I made... Uh, I think I made one mistake. Yeah, and you must he, be able and to tell made, when you've been beaten, right? Like, you can yeah, tell. I mean, yeah. sometimes it's close. Sometimes it's like you're not sure. Yeah. But pretty much, yeah, most you of the time, you, you know. And yeah, he dropped the ball like five times. I think I made one yeah. mistake. I did way hard, le higher level tricks, new tricks, creative tricks. Um, so yeah, he said, "Was it fair?" And I was like, "No." And, it, and when when I said that, he just looked at me differently, and he was like, "Ha ha ha." And I was like, oh, what? And he's like, ha, 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 ha. Nah. And, he, and I was like, well, you asked me. You came to me and asked me. I'm going to tell you what I think. And he was like, ha, ha, no, no, he was up here and you were down there. And I was like, what are you oh. talking about? I killed him. I started getting angry and I was like, <laughs> and he was like, he was up here and you were down there. And he went and touched the floor and I was like, and then we started like, I, I won't say the rest. But yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> that's what Andrew so, had yeah, that's, 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 uh, <laughs> No, we didn't, we didn't actually get into it, but... Uh, yeah, so that's that's the, that's the story there. Wow. He, yeah. he wants to have the headbutts in there. He's like, yeah, no, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> they got it on. Turn into a UFC. But yeah, also. so uh, that's, that's the story crazy. for you guys. Yeah. That was crazy. <laughs> What's the story? Back to your questions now. This one comes from Nick McLennan, who says, who will be the biggest transfer of the summer? Patrick Van Straten, lead us off, mate. What are you going to go for? Uh, I can't really look past Antoine Griezmann. Um, yeah, coming our way, coming, me and Andrew are going to be very happy. Well, as painful as it is for me to admit it, I do yeah. think that his most likely destination is Man United. Uh, and what a horrible change that'll be for him, moving from Madrid to Manchester. But, um, do you think it'll be a good move? Well, yeah. For him, for him. Oh, for him, sure. I mean, like, maybe he's... With Pogba behind him, I think that that'd be really interesting with Mkhitaryan at his side. On the other hand, he doesn't seem like a kind of Mourinho centre forward to me. Um, like a what you know, Mourinho tends to favour like a bigger guy up yeah. front. But you know what? He's he's an incredible player. He can play pretty much anywhere along your front line. He's going to be great wherever he goes. And I'd like to see him in the Premier League, even if it's at United. Yeah, mm. uh, I personally think it might be Diego Costa. I think he's actually going to go. I think all the talk was in January that he was going to leave. To uh, China. And I don't mean big in terms of stature a club he's going to because I think he might go to China but I'm talking monetary value I think sure. it could be a hundred million pound move Jesus I think it's that sort of player really? that China are all over at the moment mm. they're obsessed with signing big names Diego Costa shouldn't go there for his career Chelsea shouldn't sell him but I think he wants to leave he wanted yeah, to leave yeah. to Atletico last summer he wanted to leave in January mm. I think he will go in the summer maybe be replaced by someone like Romelu Lukaku yeah. where they make a 60 million pound profit overall or Morata and yeah or Morata and and the Chinese league benefit but Diego Costa's career falters but I think he might go what do, what do you think Andrew yeah that would be that'd be interesting I think um, 
I think probably Sanchez. Yeah. 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 Where, yeah. where do you think he'd, he'd be suited to? Hmm. I don't know. It'll Juventus. Be... There's a lot of talk to Juventus. And PSG as well. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe PSG. PSG, but I've seen a lot of players go out to go out to Paris and fault out. Di Maria, I've, he's still not done it for me in Paris. He, I know he faulted in Manchester, but went out there, didn't do much. Um, I, I, I know his first season was very good. I, 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 I always want to defend Di Maria in Manchester. I think he was very good. Like he just kind of was misused, and he was in that Van Gaal team, which was like incredibly boring. But his first yeah. season in Paris was amazing. I just don't know if he maybe like it's the classic slump though. Fits. Uh, Emery, like I don't, I don't really know. I haven't even seen that much of Krajkoviak this year. I feel like Krajkoviak no, ha ha no, hasn't bounced since since he's been been in Paris. But it'd be interesting to hear what you guys think in the comments section as well. Who do you think is going to be the biggest transfer of this summer? Let us know right now. Another question I really want to ask Andrew while we've got you here. What what's the proudest moment of your freestyle career? Proudest moment uh, for me, it's probably well. It's between two. When I won the first UK Championships. Yeah. Um, when was that? 2009. I was 17. Wow. Um, that was like a really significant moment for me because that was when I kind of, I was really shy. I, was, I used yeah. to be really shy. Really? And um, freestyle gave me a lot more confidence. I think just learning the skills and that satisfaction of like, oh, I can practice that thing and then yeah. people can be impressed by it. It's like really helped build the confidence. And yeah. then when I went into that tournament and I won, it was like, Okay, wow, maybe I can do this, go maybe I can go further. So that was a that was a big one. But um yeah, it's gotta be World Championships. The first the first World Championships I won. Where was it held? It was in Kuala Lumpur, KL. Really? Yeah, uh, Malaysia, yeah. Uh two thousand and eleven. Uh, and yeah, it was So our World crazy. Championship, how does it work? Is it literally you have to go through group stages? Because I, I know yeah. some people at home won't know the systems behind Yeah, how so it basically works. there's um, all the different freestyles from all, all over the world. Yeah. They all compete in competitions, they get ranking points, kind of like in tennis, and then they qualify for the World okay. World Tour or yeah. World Championships. So there's the top 16 in the world, they travel to the, the World Championships at the end of the year. Yeah. And, uh, contested out and the format is like it's like a battle like a kind of like a dance off like yeah. one versus one you're on a stage a circular stage three minutes on the clock two players one ball that's kind yeah. of the the slogan for it yeah so it's like one versus one and you're just going at it like i do my best tricks and then switch after 30 seconds they do their best tricks and we have three rounds 30 seconds each judges vote on creativity style control new tricks technicality all that sort of thing so and then who, who judges it uh, freestylers, like freestyle experts, like legends of legends of freestyle. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Is there any legends of freestyle that you can you, you can give examples of? Who? Yeah, there's a guy from Korea called Mr. Wu. You might have seen him years and years ago in the old T-Mobile advert, sure lying I've on a cushion on the floor. Yeah. yeah, he's a legend of freestyle. He's still doing it as well, and I think he's like, I don't know, 60 years old or something now. There's there's some other guys as well. Um, a guy called Pale. He created. He was the first person ever to do a triple around the world. So kick the ball three times around with the foot in one touch. Oh, really? So you got like kind of pioneers of the sport there judging. And, uh, that's, yeah, it's a, interesting. That's, a, that's amazing. Because obviously it's opened so many doors for you around the world. Like yeah. you know, I know that you were out with a Sapa Paul a while ago, weren't you? you yeah, were like, uh, well, it was about two months ago now. Yeah, yeah I flew over to Jamaica and uh, yeah, I was on the track every day with him. We were at Jamaican National Stadium where Usain Bolt runs his races and Asafa and all those guys train. So it was, was pretty crazy and it was just cool we were just hanging out like I met him a while back and we we became friends he's just like such an easy guy to get on with his real like Jamaican style kind of he just chilled out and just having fun and uh, yeah he showed me around but uh, it was really interesting to see him train and just the, how he takes it so seriously and uh, fast proper he, fast proper guy. fast guy <laughs> I was watching him train like um, and he was like oh we're just doing like 300 meters because they don't actually it's really weird but they don't actually train 100 meters Really? For, I think I was telling you, yeah, was yeah. I saying this the other day? Yeah, they don't, they don't um, train 100 meters for 100 meters. They yeah. train like 300 meters because it improves their leg power and uh, sure. stuff like that, which yeah. is uh, something I, I didn't know. But when he was training it, yeah, it was kind of, um, yeah, it was just like, I was like, oh, it's not that. He's not running that yeah. fast because he was like, oh, I'm going to like 30 percent, 40 percent pace, 300 meters. And it was just, it literally just looked like he was jogging. I was like, oh yeah, I could, I could do that. So after his like third time around doing it, when he's a bit more tired, I was like, okay, I'm gonna join him with this one. Just jog 300 yeah. with him at 30% of his pace. It's gonna be easy. Just to say that I've done it, said yeah. I've run with the, you know, Olympic champion. And uh, 
I went and did it and I just couldn't keep up. Like even the, you mean the, at first I'm there moving my legs like this and yeah. he's just there in front of me just going like that. And I'm like, it, it was beyond me how that even made any sense, but yeah. yeah. That is absolutely yeah. mind blowing. Because yeah. I've always thought like a Safa Powell and the likes of Usain Bolt, if you were ever to get on a track, I would be really interested. It's like, their, is it their stride length? Is it their power or? It's the, the, Technique is so important in running. I yeah. didn't, you yeah. know, I always thought yeah, it was just, control. yeah, I always thought it was just like purely about genetics and then a tiny little bit more. Yeah. But yeah. it's not a tiny little bit more, it's a lot more. You know, of course, genetics plays a massive yeah. factor, but there is the, the way that they train. Yeah. And actually, uh, as Safa was telling me, there's a lot of really talented um, British sprinters. Yeah. But they sort of get to a level at juniors and then they sort of plateau mm. because of the training. And, mm. um, you know, in schools, it's such a massive thing here. And then when you kind of break out of school, it's just like everyone forgets about it. Yeah, true. So, yeah, yeah. Ah, it's, it's really That's interesting. interesting. If, if you were to give some advice to people that are maybe interested in getting into freestyle football at home, how, how, how do people go about it? Because obviously loads of our viewers, yeah. I'm sure, will be, will be interested. Yeah, simply all you need is a ball. Just pick up a ball and try and do tricks with it. It sounds so simple, but... Uh, yeah, just have fun with it. That's the most important thing. Just play with the ball. Um, try and do, learn the basic kick-ups from left to right. Then with the knees, the shoulders, the head. And then, uh, yeah, you're pretty much on your way to becoming a freestyler. I've got tutorials that I release every week on my channel. So, uh, cool. yeah, check it out. We'll put one of those on screen now. So if you want to go and watch it, click on screen and there'll be a link in the description. Next question then from you guys at home comes from Sartak Jane. He says, who is the best 23-year-old forward in the world? Van Straten, who are you going for? One name, no reasons. Paolo Dybala. Andrew. Harry Kane. I'm going to go Lukaku. But what do you guys think? There's a poll above my head. Which of these three is the best? So that's all the questions we've got time for today, very sadly. But make sure you go over and check out Andrew Henderson. All of his social media links are on screen and in the description below. Have you got any cool stuff coming up, Andrew, that people will be excited about? A few things, yeah. One thing, actually, it's kind of, I meant to keep it a bit secret. Yeah. Um, so I can't say too much about it. But if you guys follow me on social, social media, you might have a good idea of who I'm talking about. But I'm going to be coaching a professional football player, one of the best in the world. Oh. Freestyle skills, and he's going to improve his skills, and uh, you guys are going to see more of that on my social media. But I can't tell you who it is, but a bit of a clue. We've got a few videos on my uh, social oh. media page. Very exciting stuff. So make sure you go over and subscribe to Andrew Henderson, subscribe to the Football Daily as well, and we'll catch you later. Sayonara. <laughs>